Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from AWOL Nation, titled Run. You know, there are bands you can put on any album in their discography, and you can immediately know the group. You put on an ACDC album or a Foo Fighters record, and there's a sort of comfort in knowing nearly exactly what you're going to get. I mean, there'll be slight differentiating factors, of course, but you'll know roughly what's coming. And then there are the groups that'll switch things up with every record or so. Sometimes they'll make it pretty subtle, sometimes they'll work in broad strokes, sometimes they'll throw in curveballs in the mix that only hardcore fans will see coming, but overall they tend to keep things moving. And then there's a Wall Nation band that no matter how many times I have listened to their debut album, which came out in 2011, I still have a hard time pinning down what the hell they're doing. After a well-received EP in 2010, they burst on the scene with the messy, cacophonous, electronic rock megalithic symphony in 2011 that pulled from a half dozen styles, bands, and added plenty of their own fuzz-saturated and semi-demented flavor to the mix. Part punk, part U2-inspired rock, part genre-breaking digressions that went off in all sorts of different directions, the album showed a wealth of ideas and most of them are pretty compelling but it's definitely an album that works a lot better in pieces than as a whole especially in the case of its haphazard production and it's kind of hard to ignore the lyrics often feel very thinly sketched and underweight in the big ideas that they're trying to tackle and look while Sale landed on my honorable mentions list for my favorite hits of 2013, because that's how long the mainstream took to catch up with the style that AWOL Nation was pushing, for better or for worse, I was curious to see how long the band could really push their ideas, and whether or not they could develop some cohesion on the way. In other words, I was looking forward to reviewing this album. Not because I expected it to be all that great, or even a classic, but because I knew it would at least be interesting. So was I rewarded here? Well, let's just say I got something of what I wanted, because Run by AWOL Nation is indeed an interesting listen. But I need to stress that interesting is not the same thing as, you know, good, because AWOL Nation has not gotten more cohesive with this record, trying to strip things back away from the grandiose experiments of their debut, the seams are showing all the more plainly. I do hesitate to call it a real sophomore slump because it's less of that, and more simply revealing the problems that AWOL Nation have had since the very beginning and been able to cover up, which if anything, might be even worse. So okay, those are some pretty harsh claims to make, and to start we need to look at where the biggest changes have taken place on this album, instrumentation and production. Now I'll give AWOL Nation this, in terms of their melodic composition, they can string together a pretty solid hook after a, a basic yet very catchy sing-song style. While they do feature some heavier percussion, the melodies do remain in the forefront. But while the melody is here, the band's choice to go with something of a smaller scope means that all the dramatic potency that came with the walls of fuzz and lead singer-songwriter Aaron Bruno's wild howls, it's significantly weaker. For as much as the band said they were trying to create a rougher, more raw, aggro record, Run doesn't come remotely close to this. Instead of stripping away the symphonic bomb bass and replacing it with no real rough edges in the guitars, the synthesizers, no real backing noise, there are even explosive drum progressions. There are points you can tell where Aaron Bruno wanted the guitars to sizzle and kick a little bit harder, but with the bass guitar mixed so low and the choice to leave so much guitar sizzle in the background instead of in the forefront, I'm reminded less of hard-edged electronic rock that kicks ass and more of Hebrews, the experimental record from Say Anything last year that tried to create a hard-hitting record by stripping out the guitars entirely. I mean, where's the punk edge and the energy that inflamed the more unsteady moments of that last album of Megalithic Symphony? What's even worse is that by mixing the bass so low, any grooves that do materialize have little rollicking energy or momentum. Instead, relying on very stiff drum progressions that surprisingly don't pop nearly as well as you would expect in modern rock and honestly seem pretty basic. And when you couple it with the fact that there are fewer experimental interludes or real guitar solos and few dramatic crescendos, it feels like most of the real fire and spark and energy of this record is completely gone. Now that's not saying that there aren't some good instrumental moments, because there are. The strings progression on the title track adds some good menace that could have developed some real heaviness on the back half if there was anything to the drums or the bass to support it. The one solid groove on Hollow Moon Bad Wolf that does manage some real momentum. The Fall Out Boy-esque energy of kooks everywhere that really needed a more propulsive chorus to make it work. The rubbery fuzz that at least had some real weight on I Am. The oversaturated track Dreamers that's trying to be this mosh ready dance track. It's got a decent good plinking keyboard line, but it's nothing that Devin Townsend couldn't do in his sleep and did multiple times last year. But here's the thing, most of this album is terminally underweight ballads anchored by a keyboards, a little bit of acoustic guitar, some very minimal drums, a bit of background fuzz, and well, little else. And that's not counting the songs that just feel un 
unfinished, barely clocking past the two minute mark and desperately needing more meat to really flush them out. Or transitions that feel like two songs inelegantly mashed together, especially on the back half of this album. Or these tinkling underweight production like say on Windows, where even DJ Mustard has put together richer mixes than this. And this is where we run into our second major problem, Aaron Bruno's vocals. Now here's the thing, he's a fine enough singer, he's emotive, he's charismatic, he's got range, and for the most part I can kind of brush it aside when his fuzz covered vocals go flat or sharp when he really starts howling. But aggressive vocals like that are usually grounded in instrumentation that's got a thicker foundation in order to support them. But more often than not here, he's trying to place both his quieter, smoother vocals, even support with some pretty damn good multi-tracking that I did like, and he's trying to place that with the howls on the same track. And it's rare the songs have enough energy or groove to balance them up and back them up. And this leads to the awkward moments where Bruno has to shove his louder vocals back further in the mix so they don't come across as too obtrusive against the pretty minimalist production, and we lose even more of that punch. But even the moments where he's trying to go for more of a croon, the heavier usage of reverb on his vocals means I get no sense of intimacy or real raw connection to him, which you kinda need if you're gonna be stripping back the instrumentation down to the barest bones. Now of course this is where we also get more focus on the songwriting, which is the last thing that this album really needs, because while rock lyrics can be broadly sketched or pretty vague, AWOL Nation can go broader than most, and it's been mostly to their detriment. Which of course means we don't get a lot of actual detail in the songwriting, but if anything it gets worse when you're forced to look at the writing and the flow, which is forced to clumsily crowbarring words or phrases that make a lot less sense the more you really think about it, or simply they're just to fill up space. And that's before we get to the actual content, which seems to be trying to sketch out one of the more toxic relationships that I've seen on a record in a while, and to be fair to AWOL Nation, they aren't glorifying the protagonist, which can come across like a manic depressive self-obsessed dick, more than a little pathetic as he constantly re-enters a relationship that he clearly can't stand. We're not actually getting commentary or details why he does this, or why I should like or empathize with the guy, but I can at least appreciate the framing that doesn't exactly paint him as flattering as a protagonist in the picture, which can kind of work. But here's the problem. At some point with all unlikable protagonists, we need to find that moment that really humanizes them, or at least renders them interesting enough to follow or something compelling. And really, the more Aaron Bruno sketches out this album, the less likable his protagonist becomes, and not in a way that's all that compelling. The desperation of the title track in Hollow Moon Bad Wolf, okay, that's at least understandable. But as the album continues, we get the petty sniping at friends on I Am, or the wild paranoia of kooks everywhere, and there's a limit to how much of the love-hate relationship the narrator has with love that I can really take. And what I find least attractive is how disingenuous it all feels. We get broad statements and confessions of love that are more than a little bit melodramatic, but are at least played sincerely, but then we get songs like Lie Love, Live Love, where it's implied that the relationship is consuming both of their lives, and like people, like plastic, where it's very evident that both people are miserable in this case, nobody's being honest with each other. But the absolute worst song on this album is Drinking Lightning. And it's mostly for the chorus, it's a petty stab at an ex, the assumption that this girl will come back next year, and that line, you don't fare well without me. Not only is it presumptuous and condescending as hell, but it's also a complete lie, because our narrator has gone to incredible lengths across this album to profess his love time and time again. If the album was framed as capturing that thrill of a wild on-again, off-again relationship, or the self-awareness that applied this guy's plan would eventually backfire by doing this, it could have worked here, but it's all plays straight, especially with the inclusion of a voicemail message to bookend the album, from a friend inviting the frontman Aaron Bruno to a birthday party. And believe it or not, it was that moment that really soured me on Run by AWOL Nation. Because it is one hell of an ego trip. The lyrical self-obsession, the framing that allows the narrator to lash out and behave badly, and yet avoid all the consequences and remain somehow the center of this album's universe. And okay, that could be fine. A lot of albums, they focus primarily on the frontman's personal neuroses and struggles. But considering this album was intended to show a journey into maturity, admitting one's own flaws and really growing up from them, it falls flat on its face because our narrator does not change, revolve, or mature. If anything, he gets worse, perhaps developing more confidence, but still being in a toxic back and forth relationship at the album's end, presuming that it will all fall in his favor and in his end. A big presumption at that. And when, when you pair it with haphazard production and mixing, a real lack of groove, vocals that rarely fit the songs all that well, and only a few tracks that can claw together some form of cohesion. No, I'm sorry, this record's a light 5 out of 10 and barely a recommendation. Only if you're a hard 
hardcore fan of AWOL Nation and that's being generous. But you know what, even with that, given how much they've stripped away the experimentation and real scope and power of Megalithic Symphony, I'm sorry, this album can't help but feel like a real disappointment. As I said, interesting does not always mean good. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. If there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or anything else that you guys want me to review, I'd be more than happy to get to it. I'm just warning you, I got a busy schedule right now. I'm trying to get through them as quickly as I can. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.